welcome to the Omega League Asia Division. My name is Nomad. Joining me is 1437 as we get into this best of three lower bracket game. The second game of the playoffs, the second series of the playoffs. And it is Eho Immortal versus Demonster. These two teams battling it out for their chance to come forward and take their share of the prize pool. And of course be crowned one of the best teams in Asia. Uh, Theba went quite a way through this draft. So just quickly going into this series, what are you expecting from these two teams? All right, well, I think the monster they technically should be the better team, no, especially team. throughout the group stage. I think they've performed quite uh, better than Eho Immortal has, but Eho Immortal, you know, coming through that win against uh, Adroid, they got that momentum going. So maybe they have also figured something out about themselves that's going to help them. So I'll just go to the draft real quick because we're almost near the end here. Uh, the monster they get a tiny Doom, Veno, Phoenix Mag, all solid first phase bands. Five nothing uh, different there. So Demon also just t take up the next pick in that order of heroes that have been considered OP in the past. So Tiny, you have Immortal get the other position for the Clockwork. Demon monster go with Rubik. Darkseer, Clockwork on the side of Immortal. Then we have the Disruptor, so the ba big vacuum combo hero. And then Demon monster go with Morphling, which is very surprising for me. But a lot of carries have already been banned out, and that might be one of the reasons why. And then Immortal go for the Terrorblade. So Terrorblade into the Morphling, but Terrorblade again. Can farm very fast, really strong carry, can actually out farm both quite a lot. Uh, so I can see how it can work out. Then the monster go with the clop, get that magic damage, be able to go into the back line. The monster go with the elder titan right after that. So he got that uh, big aura against the terror blade, which is really nice. Remove all his uh, base armor, and that's what terror blade is, right? Stats, base armor. <laughs> that's all he is. And yeah. magic He's just walking on. Yeah. Exactly, and then you get that magic reduction too with the Morphling and the Queen. The e is going to do so much work in this game. And then they pick up Void Spirit on Immortal for the mid lane against the Quap. So no big surprise there. Not Nothing uh, you know, like super surprising in this draft at least. I guess the Elder Titan is probably the biggest one because it is a... Not, not something that we often see, but it's really cool in this game. Paired up with the Queen of Pain and the Morphling and the Tiny even. Tiny probably does the most amount of magic damage out of all these heroes. Yeah, I think it's like the third or fourth pick inside this event, um, specifically in the Asian division. Um, teams will pick it if they think it's really good, basically. It's not a common pickup at all by any stretch of the imagination, though. But yeah, I do like it. And it's got the dual purpose here of helping out the, uh, obviously, kill the Terror Blade with that one side of the aura, and then also helping amplify the Tiny and the Rubik with the uh, Magic Resistance aura as well. So yeah, both sides of the T uh, of the Elder Titan helping out a lot to uh, try and bring down the side of E Home. Overall, uh, I think both teams, This is, I mean, this is a way more even draft than any of the drafts we saw yesterday, I would say. Would, would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I, I guess so. In this tournament, there's been so many lopsided drafts, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> it's and nice to see one which is draft, even. Right, and when, when draft is one-sided and these teams are so equal in skill, it just gets real messy for the other team. So this game, I feel these teams are more prepared. For one another, they really understand one another. I'm assuming they actually train a lot with one another too. So it's gonna be very exciting to see um, how this game will pan out. I I really don't expect the stomp to go either way unless someone just starts feeding in the laning <laughs> stage. Can can happen to be fair. Can happen. We've, it can. We've seen it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no one on these on either of these teams gives us reason to doubt them yet. But of course, when the pressure comes on, that's when the mistakes start to come out. Hopefully, they can all pull it together but shiro and his terror blade i mean this guy he wrecked the play-ins mm -hmm. on this terror blade here so you've got to you've yep. got to be expecting this on the side of the monster and you've got to have a plan to deal with it i don't know if the elder titan was that plan i i would imagine so i guess to just go et and then you know queen of pain nice magic nuking mid laner along with the aura from the tb you know to bring him down late game they have options is what i'm trying to get at shiro might not be having the same free game as he's had uh, previously Leo yeah, it's does. not really fun to play against Tiny, E.T., Morphin, Queen as a terror. Actually, even Rubik, it's purely all magic damp beside a Dire. Because the Lakin get that E.T. <laughs> right, so if he gets stomped, things are really scary, and he also doesn't have any saves on his team. The one good thing he does have is the Surge. That's a big battle going on here. They're going in for four bounties on the side of Eho Immortal. 
Miliodus. I'm gonna jump in and uh, be able to take that one bounty rune. Meanwhile, on the back lines, yeah, I mean, this, uh, this clockwork, he has got the bounty rune and he's gonna get out with his life as well. So, all's well, all's well. A little bit of uh, aggression from me, Home Immortal. Does pay off nicely as they grab themselves three bounty runes. That was really nice. Well calculated by them. Yeah, uh, very good, very good. So, uh, bottom lane's gonna start off with Shiro probably having, well, I wanted to say a free time, but actually with the Elder Titan down here to start things off, maybe not so much. Maybe they can put a bit of pressure onto the TB, but this of course does mean that the Morphling's gonna be alone for a little bit, and yeah, the TB's just gonna come back. He's gonna uh, charge up that Astral Spirit. Oh, it's coming all the way across the map. This is smart, actually. If he if he can get three or maybe four heroes wow. inside this Astral Spirit, <laughs> it's it's gonna hurt. Yeah, it will. And Dark is not going to be level 2 yet. Let's see. Oh, this this is not going to run to the creep lane, though. Yeah, it's just normal damage. Ooh. Oh, well. He can actually slap the Clockwork up a little bit. Clock didn't go with Boots. Got the Windlace build, obviously. Uncle Elder Some Titan just up. giving him a little slap on the bottom. But, nah, uh, Planet doesn't mind too much. It's, it's, it's early game Elder Titan with, like, two heroes caught in the Astral. It's not threatening in the slightest. So, yeah, Clockwork's even going to do a bit of zoning here. Threaten with the battery assault as well, and just make sure this Dark Seer is nice and lonely as he found those creeps and Morphling doing the exact same thing. So both these guys are probably going to be able to get uh, all the creeps in this creep wave. Unless the other time comes in and is super annoying, which he is very good at doing. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, we've got the Void Spirit versus the Queen of Pain. Uh, is this a good matchup for the Void Spirit? I guess he's got to dodge the dagger, this right? Yeah, he's got to dodge dagger with the dissimulate. Uh, it shouldn't be that bad for him because he does have the uh, resonate pulse that will let you, resonant pulse that will let you tank up a little bit against his matchup. I think it's actually easier to play voice spirit in this matchup than Ember is. Oh, but I could be wrong. I mean, so well, I mean, it, just... it, it, it's... we've seen that happen all the time where like Ember just smashes the Queen of Pain, you know, and yeah. like voice spirit smash Queen of Pain, and then Queen of Pain smash. There's so many factors involved in like even the first laning blocks, the first two waves, who gets more last hits, who gets their healing salve out first or bottle first. So it's really hard to say. But yeah, he's true. able to dodge these quite easily. It's right? a dis it's a dissimilate which makes the difference because yeah, as you as we mm -hmm. see, he's just able to very quickly jump himself away. But I mean, I guess I guess Ember has the better mobility level six technically because he's got the three charges and slight of fists, so more likely to be able to get a kill onto mm -hmm. the Queen of Pain. I don't know, these matchups have a, a very nuanced, you know, more than what we see on the front. A bit of trading going on. This is well, the first tiny position 3 we've seen, I believe, in this entire region. I don't think we ever see tiny play as a position 3. It's like either position 2 or the 4. Yeah, true enough. Oh, really the come bottom. Over, but then comes the return kill. That is going to be Miliodas. Yeah, a beautiful bait from AA Hard there as he's just trying to really kind of seduce the disruptor there and be like come and hit me mm -hmm. come on take a take a couple more hits you know you know you could do it and then boom lift into the tiny tiny blows him up with a combo and the disruptor is dead the tiny uh level two avalanche just does way too much damage i think i gotta that's, agree <laughs> i mean yeah that's probably three. what's gonna get nerfed or something next time because it's constantly picked and it's good because you get that big burst as soon as you level three like this disruptor can actually come back into the lane and play out of position like that ever again you will yeah. just die to one lift combo. Yeah, gotta show your respect to the rock man. The rock god. <laughs> just taunting around in his lane. Shiro though, he's having a good time. He doesn't mind. You know, his support is the one dying. So he's got absolute free farm level 2. Or his meta is up again now, so it's gonna pop that. He went for the ring of Tarask. He knows it's gonna be taking a lot of damage this game, and he needs that extra H from it too. Yeah, and there's the extra point that you have to be full health versus as Tiny, as you see here, because he does lose so much of his health pool to the combo that uh, he has no choice but to make sure he's got this Ring of Tarask and make sure he's always uh, tip-top and healthy so that Tiny just can't go in and uh, combo him to death with a Fade Bolt. You know, that would be, uh, mm -hmm. that would be sad. That's the Ring Very of Tarask smart purchase to do. over the Wraith Bands and things like that because of the extra HP that you get. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Definitely is. Meliodas just uh, being bullied out of the lane, but now that that meta is over, the Tiny can actually hit some creeps again. Well, the supports are fighting over a hard camp. I'm not sure if they're trying to pull it or farm it or, or what, but <laughs> they're, they're definitely having a disagreement about this one. <laughs> yeah, both uh, the cores getting a lot of farm to start this game off, so definitely going to be a game of Morphling and TB. 
an interesting matchup between the two of them, isn't it? Because, I mean, you can turn into the TB and steal Metamorphosis and Conjure Image and Reflection, which, you know, oh, yeah. they're, they're okay spells. They're pretty good spells. I think this game, you don't really have better options for it, so... Mm, I think you want to spirit? maybe turn into the darks here early on, Ooh. so you get that Ion Shell and Surge for yourself. Like, Surge Morphling is scary, Sonnen, right? You just Surge Ooh. yourself in. Or surge in your Elder Titan or your Tiny, right? You can even shell the Tiny and surge them up. Oh, that's a pretty cool strategy, actually. You're playing against Darkseer, and you know, the Darkseer is uh, surging someone, and then you got the Tiny on your team, right? You make like a really nice trade. Watch, that's gonna be the next meta in Europe. Alright, one all right, team nice to turn again. You know, getting wrapped around the pond here by the clockwork. They didn't see this one coming, but the Elder Titan comes in and the stomp. It's gonna save his life, just about. Very, very close though. And now they look for the turnaround. Shiro's in trouble. He's gonna drop. Great Whoa. turnaround from the side of the monster, but now it's easy Q. He's in trouble as well. A couple more right clicks will be required. They're not gonna be there. Toss comes in though, but it's onto the clockwork and not the disruptor. So it will just be the one kill, but it is a kill they very, very muchly wanted. They're gonna be happy with this one, also being able to save their tiny. A pretty big kill, and the Morphling is just free farming top against Darkseer anyway, so the rotation from the Elder Titan, it cannot be punished. TB, even if he goes top, he can't oh! have any top Oh, oh no! no! Oh no my way. goodness! He gets sniped by the no flare! Way. That's crazy. Oh god. The odds of that happening. Oh my. <laughs> god damn calculated Bottom. yeah the clock Again. might be in some trouble now he's been somewhat surrounded they're on top of him they're doing it. some damage queen's gonna come in yeah and she is gonna clean him up i mean pretty pretty big rotation for the queen for a clock kill but i guess he did just kill their carry mm. you know you gotta send that message right uh the queen was thinking hey this terribly pop meta maybe he's actually gonna help the clock out but then he decided to back off with the terror blade so it was not really that amazing of a rotation and she had a dd as well so if the tb was even a little bit out of position oh queen though she's the one getting gone on right now she's dead wow Ugh. okay yeah uh, she so used the void play. walking back into the mid lane yikes Big interesting yikes. clarity from the clockwork there onto the void he's got that dagger in him so that didn't last very Probably long. the last hero you want uh, getting kills on the map right now. If you're the monster, Void Spirit, right? He's gonna yeah. get the Iron Shell later with the Surge. He's gonna be running around killing people. So if he's snowballing, he's gonna have a lot of stats. Very hard to kill. High levels, lots of damage output. Queen of Pain made a big, big, big mistake. Now she's only she's not even level seven yet. When she comes back to the lane, the Void Spirit's already gonna be level eight. Yikes. Yeah. She's walking back to this lane as well because she TP'd back to mid as well. Oh god. Oh yeah. no. Yep. R. Made it made a decent rotation. Got a kill onto a TB, secured it, and now. Made things pretty difficult for herself. Hopefully it doesn't cost her too much. So you know how in Europe, like I was watching the Immortal games yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. And um Dark Chair is literally the center of the dress. With OG secret, you know, all like not not really OG and secret, but the teams, the other teams that they're playing against, like are constantly picking this dark too. So I wonder if at some point secret and OG are gonna start picking like Morphling, just because mm. of this reason. Like, it just came to my mind. Like you take it, you copy the dark seer, you get your own iron shell and surges on like your let's say tiny, because tiny has been a top pick as well. Nobody wants to give a team tiny and dark seer in the same draft. It's actually so bullshit, right? You got this. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah overpowered magical damage burst hero and then you give him like 500 movement speed and an iron shell for some more damage hell no so if you pick morphling when they have darks here and you have a tiny you can just use that on him and get it same draft naughty naughty and the morphling's always gonna have a good lane against the darks here as well uh, right no exactly clockwork in the game oh it's very very hard for um dark to lane against morph because morph can actually deny creeps he has such high uh, damage mm-hmm and Darkseer does his damage over time stuff. Like, it's not really the burst that you need to deal with a Morphling. It's not. It's not. Man, pretty quiet laning phase. We approach the 10 minute mark. I mean, that's, I guess that's what's mm. going to happen when you have a Morphling and a TB in the same game. You know, th these guys, yeah. they like their creeps, and there's no domination in the middle lane. I mean, I, uh, the Void Spirit's ahead, sure, but he doesn't actually want to move around that much. It seems he's waiting for his Yules. He knows the TB's having a good game. He just wants to get as much out of the laning phase as possible. What about that money? Agreed. 
this Void Spirit though, got a regen rune. Wants to get the 10 minute power rune as well. Yeah, so Queen of Pain. Queen She's of Pain. not going to find it. She's got the blink Bottom. away though, so he's going to be alright. Meanwhile, the uh, Dark Seer is actually going for a play onto the Morphling here, along with the Clockwork. They need a lot more damage than this if they want to bring down this Morph, and well, they're not going to be able to do so. Interesting oh, jump up in the top lane. The clock is actually going for Orkane, not a vessel this game. Even though he's playing up against a Morphling. Oh. Wants okay. to go for a more Korish build. Yeah, greedy. Cool. Greedy. We'll see if it pays off for him. Yeah. yeah, I think it will because this way, when you hook into the Rubik, you can also Orkid him. So he can't toss you out of the cogs as well, which is quite nice. You got, you're going to have way more... Uh, kill potential, so you're gonna pretty much force the Rubik into buying four stuff. Normally, Rubik doesn't Radiant's need to buy four stuff against Clock, yeah. just uses lift. So, if he buys the arcade, we'll force him to do that. ET, same thing. Tiny as well, can't toss you out of the Radiant's cogs if you're arcaded. So, I can see how it makes sense. And you get this nice Sage Mask for the mana region early on, too. You're just not tanky, that's the only problem. Yeah. Meanwhile, ZZQ no just kind of AFK in the trees down at bottom, absorbing this XP, watching his tower fall. <laughs> Nothing he could do about it. Top lane, though, this tower's still quite healthy, right? Half HP. Not bad, Doing or less okay. than half. Doing okay, yeah. yeah. Wolf we'll actually going straight into the Lincoln's heroes. as well. They need to bring more heroes, they want to kill him. Oh, look who's going bottom. Interesting. They want the tiny. Yeah, and they may well just get him as the hookshot comes in through Melia. There's way too far from home here. Dark and he's going to get up. picked off. But the return coming out in the top lane. The lift is up onto the Darks here. In comes a Queen of Pain with more heroes here. They will be able to take him down with relative ease. Oh, Ruby got uh, level 3 surge as well. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Nice. What can he do with this? Yeah. He can use that on the tiny. Play with the tiny, get a surge on him, smoke him up. And then he can go into the fight, toss combo, you get the fade bolt. Easy kills. That's the point, yeah. If they really want to steal these Darkseer spells, then uh, they can have like double surge, which sounds hilarious. Yeah. I wonder if it stacks. No. Uh, oh, Tiny gonna oh. get glimpsed back oh, to the God. base. Oh, <laughs> oh, the tower is so dead now. I know. Oh, that doesn't yeah, feel that good. <laughs> that does yeah, not that feel feels good. real bad, dude. This Tiny always wants to constantly be on the map, you know, pushing lane now, lanes out with this combos. They're actually gonna back off the mid tower. What? Top what? You should I mean you should have committed hardcore for that tower. Yeah. Even if you had to tank or pop your meta. Now yeah. that Tiny's back mid, this tower is not dead anymore. No, no. And I mean that was a mistake from Meliodas, you know, as much as it okay, sucked, never mind, but... it's dead. Uh, okay. They got meta. Whatever. <laughs> cool yeah, hero I mean, TV. I thought this tiny was gonna run into him, avalanche toss combo, and then like Eevee's just gonna run, but then uh he just sat there and trusty shoveled. Rubik searching himself away from the clockwork and he is just about gonna live. Meanwhile, the tiny in the mid lane won't be so lucky. Rubik does go down regardless. And that's gonna be two kills for Ehome here. They are slaughtering this mid lane right now. That was not a good reaction from the monster to defend that mid tower. They just no. had an opportunity to do it and they just like, so yeah, maybe we wanna defend it. You know, just <laughs> went there. And then all of a sudden, boom, you just get collapsed on by five heroes because you're too slow on your reaction. That feels bad. The tiny died, got to mid, got glimpsed back, walked back to mid, died again, and now he's going to TP out. Yeah, he was third in net worth, and oh, now geez. he's like sixth. <laughs> yeah, he's fallen off heavily, at least in net worth. But he hasn't had his timing set where he gets his blink dagger, here. right? Or even yeah, play with yeah. this Rubik. So let's see what happens here. They're gonna go for another tower. Shiro, he's uh, he's an absolute wrecking ball right now. He is, yeah, abusing the Morphling's early timing. They tried to unleash onto the Clockwork here, but unable to do so. Clockwork's still coming forward. He's got the hookshot forward in as well. Onto the Tiny. Again. Tiny is dead. Uh, Spill's gonna come through there. That should finish the clock. And now two man Sonic Wave doing a decent amount of work here. Dwarf stolen out by the Rubik, trying to finish off four, five, nine, and they get that kill. Meanwhile, those dual walls sitting here. Morphling is in. He's looking for a target. ZZQ is going to be that target. Nice jukes around the trees. The Morphling will just throw him over the adaptive strike and finish the job. Now, Shiro, last one left alive other the Void Spirit. Can they run him down is a question. They've got that lift. They've got the throwback as well. Daggers are in. Damage is out. And down Ooh. goes the TB. Great fight from the monster here as they do manage to rally together and find hold themselves on, a response to the aggression. It's not yet done. Oh, no. Not Void again. Spirit. Not again. He, he could just burst him, right? He's, he's got... He's full agi. Almost. 
And in they go, but he gets the nope. strength morph off. He goes in with the Aether Remnant, and unfortunately, the Morphlex reactions are a little too quick. How the hell? How did, how did he do that? <laughs> Dude, Is it because he I saw the clockwork? I think it's because he saw the clockwork. Maybe, maybe. Meanwhile, Rubik gets bursted and clockwork gets silenced up, so it should be okay. Yeah, I mean that was, that was insanely fast reactions. I don't know how he managed that. Yeah, I think I think it's because he saw the clockwork on the ward there, uh, on the high ground. Like even if he saw the voice spirit drop the remnant like on the ward, I, I don't think he would have been fast enough. But damn, that was some insane reactions. It has to, it had to have been the clockwork. Okay. Well, uh, we'll, we'll say it's that. Yeah. I love the way the Morphling, since he got killed by the Rocket Flare, hasn't let himself be on that low HP again. <laughs> you know, he's, yeah. every time he goes to, like, full agi, he's like, oh, wait, and gives himself just enough HP to survive that Rocket Flare. Pretty funny. Meanwhile, Remnant comes down onto the creep. Bit of ward on ward action here up in the top. And you have Immortal, they're, they're not letting up. They are completely about this pressure game right now. Uh, Stephanie is being the Radiance head aggressor tower. right Central now on their attack. team. Trying to find these kills, trying to find these pickoffs, trying to put the pressure onto the monster and make them feel scared. Radiance bottom tower. It's fun to see the Morphling and the TB so neck and neck as well. In a draft where I don't, I, you know, I don't know who to give the advantage to. Like, I guess maybe the monster have a tiny advantage, but then. With the way these lanes have gone, oh, hook shot forwards onto the Morphling. They've got the Sag Storm to follow up with as well. And this time there is no strength Morphe. He's just got to get popped and the Rubik along with him. Two clean kills from the side of E-Home Immortal. They didn't know they had a ward here, huh? They just thought it was a random remnant. That's kind of crazy. It's really bad for them losing the Morphling just like that. I mean, the last fight they won on the monsters because Void Spirit wasn't really there, right? Mm. And they were outnumbered, but now that the voice, like the voice bear has to be the hero that you play around with. Uh -oh, Look at Tiny this. being sucked oh, into geez. the middle of everything, and he's gonna get his life taken away from him by Shiro as well. Yeah, they are, they are absolutely on the, uh, on the death dude, this, march right now. This is like a different Ehome Immortal team right here, dude. It is. These guys, you know, they were about to be eliminated, and then all of a sudden, they get to. <laughs> play because of the other team's 3 to 2 and now look at them. They're just destroying. 70. Found them. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, reborn from the seeds of failure. And <laughs> GG, uh, man. coming back in. <laughs> oh. Okay. Z -Z 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 gets killed off in the bottom lane by 70. See, why can't Z -Z 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 just be called like 11Z or something, you know? I don't know. Maybe he's just that sleepy. <laughs> he wants to show you how sleepy he really is. He's a tired boy. I don't even know if they. It, it always struck me as weird. Why? Why is? Why do we use Z Z Z Z Z as a way to convey sleep? Because that's what that's what you sound like when you're snoring, I guess. Oh, Queen of Pain, Mac oh, used to. Oh, Darks here, still alive for the time being, actually, and they're gonna get up the Kalanic Field. They've got the Sag Storm down as well, and they are gonna lose 5 9. Meanwhile, the Morphling getting so low, but just about surviving through it. And now he's angry. Like he's it. pissed. But now he's jumping Yee. into everybody. I'm not sure he's got enough strength more for this. Oh, the sleep comes in. ZZZZZ living up to his name here and putting them all to sleep. Catch them, Z's boys, and now they get taken on down. They're gonna lose Shiro, but 70 jumps the back lines, finds a kill onto the Morphling here with this double damage, but now they will surround him. Do they have the damage? They have the silence to stop him getting away. Well, he's actually got not got that many spells left, and with the toss, they will put an end to him. So that's going to be a big, big response in the middle lane. Meanwhile, Tiny looking in for ZZQ here. Can they find him? Yes, they can. R comes in with just squeezing the last bit of mana out of herself there as they bring them down. Four kills. Actually, that might have been a full five-man wipe. Yeah, it was. Just a couple of respawns coming out, but the full five-man wipe from the monster. What a fight from them. And that's what happens when you blow your spells on the Home Immortal and don't get anything for it. You know, this it really is this close of a game where one missed you static storm and the monster are gonna come at you. Right. That's the thing. Right now, the tiny Elder Titan, like this magic burst timing is really hitting their power spikes, and Eho Immortal, they gotta be careful. They have they don't have the they don't have the HP or the items to be able to deal with this, with all this magic burst coming out from the monster side. This tiny got his blink dagger. He's going for a Dagon next. This ET he's getting so many levels now. We saw the Terra Blade just get uh, slapped up. The ET just didn't care. He just ran straight to him. Get yep. that aura on top of him. 
and the follow-up damage just came out you know it got that queen of pain with the orchid too he needs to get to his manta asap was he at 200 gold 300 gold yeah he's gonna have manta pretty soon yep and he's, he's gonna, gonna get be... okay here we go et freebie oh no my boy my sweet little boy he's being destroyed by the clockwork no mercy from him yeah, and that's orchid go finished is it uh yeah he does he's very rich oh my <laughs> goodness it's... What a bull. So working out well for him. I mean, yeah. the Rubik is also quite rich this game. He's got four staff and Aetherlands. All the support. I mean, I, I, I guess they have been fighting a decent amount, and uh, these these supports have been, you know, they're both five three, <laughs> five three six and five three seven. Yeah, they're uh, both of their KDAs. So yeah, very very rich guys. They are near enough neck and neck. Meanwhile, in the middle lane. Um. Okay, just, just the, the, the cause. They see each other. They get they get pretty busy on one another. Uh, but they're going to jump in on this Morgan right now. He's losing his health so quickly. He's starting to stop and cut down. Oh, no. That was a huge mistake from him. He is going to lose his life. Now, Static Storm comes down to the Tiny. Trying to look for the secondary kill here. It's like taking down the Rubik as well. Meliodas, he's getting run down by the TP. Too much damage being pumped out of this man. And now, ZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZ
Queen of Pain, dude, I, I can't believe it that she didn't die in that entire engagement. She had perfect positioning. Eho and Mortal weren't even looking for her. So whatever she's doing right now with this Bloodthorn, it's working. And uh, I think it shouldn't be. So here we go, Void Spirit, finally. <laughs> Okay, they uh -oh. realized that, hey guys, oh, look at this Queen of Pain, she has no BKB, it's 25 minutes in. Why don't we try to kill her instead? Yes, why don't we murder the Queen of Pain? That seems like a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Like, well... it's so easy to actually to kill this cult. They just have to think about killing her, that's it. Mm -hmm. And they can do it. They just keep focusing, like, the Morphling, who has, you know, 4,000 HP, Lincolns. Not really, uh... Morphling, look at this dude, he's just going in right now. I mean, they, they know they've got no yeah. Static Storm. This makes the Morphling's game really straightforward as they find themselves one kill. Morphling coming in, looking for more with that Darkseer form. He is abusing and using that Darkseer. It's really good, I understand. Yeah. You should transform and use the spell on him before it runs out. Okay, he's doing it. Before it runs out, nope. Not gonna happen. Meanwhile, oh my oh, god. Oh, oh goodbye. <laughs> see goodbye. you later, buddy. <laughs> Jesus, that's the Agnin's pickup. Didn't expect that one. Meanwhile, Melee does look for a turn kill, but the Void Spirit is still alive and that Essence Ring helping him out. Rubik, Rubik gonna cut through him, but it actually wakes him up and allows him to get off the uh, Dissimulate here. DZZ still trying to cut him down, but unfortunately, this Void Spirit is pretty damn tanky. In they go, though. Melee does will put an end to him. There it is. Meanwhile, they'll lose their Rubik in the middle lane, but a worthwhile trade for the side of the monster. Yeah, 70 seconds without the Rubik. Queen of Pain is alive now. It's very good to about... <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to revisit that kill in the middle lane onto the Morphling. How much can you blame Morphling for that kill? Because obviously it was the Aghanim's pickup. At the same time, they must have seen him building it, so they should have known it was coming. I mean, I don't, I don't really know how to analyze that one. Meanwhile, the Queen of Pain, she's getting her biscuits buttered in the bottom lane once again. Oh, no BKB Queen of Pain? Oh, okay. Let's <laughs> oh, go. that's a shame. <laughs> Oksha Orchid, easy kills. Like this clock could nearly solo kill the Queen of Pain at this. Point. Yeah, this is uh, a bit of an issue. I mean, finally she's getting punished, right? Like I think top lane, it should have been the same thing happening where they should have just found the clock, but I don't think they realized that this clock was so weak because she went yeah. for a straight Bloodthorn build. But now they do, they kill her back to back, and she's still about 900 gold away from BKB. They have to prioritize that first on Demon. They cannot take another fight, because this queen will die. Yeah, with the Aghanims on Void Spirit as well. I mean, they've got so much silence. They've got Static Storm. They've got three AoE silences, basically, inside these team fights, which is uh, insane. So the the speaking of the Morphling, I think he should not have been in that mid area to begin with. Like, there's you have no business pushing these tier two towers at this stage in the game when you don't have a way to, one, remove the silence, you know, there, there's like an orchid, you couldn't get glimpsed an orchid, you might die the same way too, right? So, um, there's a lot of factors involved there, you just can't be pushing towers at this point. If you're, you just gotta keep on farming, get your next item, play for that faster E-Blade timing. Like, when you take towers, you're actually spending a lot of time not hitting creeps. Yeah. Right? And you're also giving your opportunity for your opponent to fight, and if you fight, then you're also not farming creeps. So you're just slowing down all your timings by doing so. So in this situation, more now he got the E5. Five man smoke immediately jumped by the void spirit here though. And he's gonna realize oh. something fishy's going on and get himself away. And meanwhile, uh they oh. went out onto the disruptor and they're gonna put an end to ZZQ straight up. That's a big threat taken off the map. Oh god, look what Queen had to buy because she keeps dying. Oh, she went straight yours and sent the BKB. You can't yeah. do that anymore, though. Like it's it's not just the static storm anymore. It's it's the void spirit with two charges on an AOE silence to add to this. I don't know. I don't. I really don't like this yours. Yeah, she really needed the BKB. It wasn't that far crazy. away. It would, it would have let her scale way better. Now that she has yours, she still needs to go back for the BKB, right? So mm -hmm. her scaling has re like shortened a bit, but then she does have like this Bloodthorn. Which has a lot of impact in the fight. Use it on like who? Darkseer? No, not Darkseer. Clockwork, I guess. Disruptor. Those two are probably the best targets to use it on. Unless the Darkseer already pops the Guardian Beast. Here we go, Rubik so, on the back. Who needs backdoor protection anyway? But yeah, Rubik actually gets a lift off onto the TB at the very least before he goes down, steals meta for some reason, turning into a teeny weeny TB, and now he's gonna get killed. Killing his own son, heartless. And now they hook shot into the trees. Oh no, they found two of them the side, just cuts them in twain. Two heroes just absolutely sent to the de bin. Oh Jesus. Yeah, I mean, dude, oh. Yeah, this is such a this is like a different team, man, compared to the group stage. I yep. swear they were playing far worse 
during the group stage, but you know, they found out. They found out how to play Dota. Yep, they unlocked their inner potential. Breathe and believe, baby. Breathe and believe. Yeah, it looks like the monster have no idea how to play at the moment unless they smoke up and get this uh, Elder Titan Astro Spear E Blade combo onto someone very important. Like the shelter died, but it, it it's it's becoming less and less relevant that they're able to burst it. Yeah, well, I mean, when the Void Spirit basically has Disruptor ulti on a uh, yep. on two charges, you know, it's it, he doesn't feel as important anymore. He is he is definitely not the uh, hero he used to be. What's Wolfling going for? I mean, he needs a BKB as well. You, you can't play into these AoE silences anymore. Yep. A game where it Why feels like it... everyone needs a BKB and no one has one. <laughs> Why doesn't the spell of Resonant Pulse show like how long a hero sounds for? Great question. And one I do not have the answer for, unfortunately. Uh... It just says... It... It sounds and gains two charges, but then it doesn't say like how long they stay sounds for. We're in beta, boys. Okay, let's just no free game, no bitching. Beta, no bitching. <laughs> All right. Maybe Move it's on. the same duration as a shield. Ten seconds. That'd be balanced. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ten seconds. Duration I can see on that spell, so it must be it. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Damn, the spell's pretty good. Here we go. Queen uh -oh. of Pain. Oh, Queen of Pain. Let's count it. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's, it's about it's two and a half though. seconds. No, it wasn't four seconds. I was just uh, counting really quickly for some reason. I would have guessed I mean, 2.5. You know what? I'm going to go to Wikipedia, uh, Liquipedia and check it real quick. Right. It's like, imagine you have to go on another website to figure out what the <laughs> spell does. All right, listen. You know, a lot of these newer players to Dota, they've been spoiled by uh, by by the new tool tips and everything being clean. You know, back in my day, I'd be like, playing Dota, I'd be like, composite damage? The hell is composite damage? Head over to Liquipedia yeah. every other game to find out Our various chaos mechanics damage, and whatnot. Piercing damage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that stuff still exists, too. You just, I mean, there's no, like, real easy way to find what that is, what that even means. <laughs> All right, here we go. In the back lines. Oh, Void Spirit again. Jump's got Yules, though. Yeah, Morphling kind of playing around right now. Is the uh, Link is actually going to get popped? Hookshot comes through and 70 still okay. And now the double science is out of the Morphling. He doesn't have anything to get rid of these and he's going to get killed off instead. And now Melia Dursi is in some trouble as a TB arrives to this fight. Chops through the tiny. He's taken out. CZQ still on low HP, but is absolutely fine as his two aggressors have been dispatched cleanly. Oh this, man. This is crazy. He's, it's like the spider legs terror blade with surge. It's like the scariest <laughs> shit I've ever seen. My god. The damage is insane. I'm on the back lines, Elder Titan being called out somewhat as he's gonna lose his life as well. Buyback from him as they have to scramble to defend this high ground. But Ehome Immortal, you know what? They've got a lot from this. They don't have the meta anymore. They're not gonna call it a day. They're happy. They got themselves a ton of buybacks. They've uh, got themselves a couple of kills. Got themselves yeah, some yeah. racks in mid even. Yeah, chill out. Let's 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 hit the showers. Get that data list. So this 700 movement speed Terrorblade can just go in and crit anybody he wishes. <laughs> no yeah. problem. Real balance. BKB on the clockwork too. My God, this position for clock is insane. I, I'm going to take this build, man. I, I love the Orchid first on clock. It's, it seems super legit. It just helps out your team a lot and plenty of mana regen. Let's you scale well, too, if you keep on snowballing with that. Mm -hmm. Good, it's good. And yeah, the Darks here, good. you know, you got it so many good. auras. Hmm. There it goes. I don't know, dude. This game looks... It looked good for Team Monster for a while, and then when I saw the Bloodthorn, I'm like, uh, bro, you need BKB <laughs> so I can jump in there. And now you don't, and then you're just feeding on the Queen of Pain. Like, I think she was 4 and 1 before, like, the Bloodthorn or whatever. Yeah, or one clumsy one death at mid to the uh, Void Spirit, which TP'd back in and got blown up. But other than that, it was going great. But yeah, now this Roshan's going down. He's super low. They're not going to get here nearly in time. Discovering this way too late. I think it might be the last ditch attempt here as they jump in onto the clockwork, try and blow him up. But the two man static storm coming through. They don't really have an answer to this. Yule's out from the Queen of Pain, but she's still silenced up. And now with the Void Spirit on top of her as well, she just can't play Dota. She cannot play the game in the slightest. Morphling gets picked off as well. And even the other Titan's gonna get glimpsed and held still on the fight here, just for the extra little bit of juicy nugget on the side. Oh man. I see a tip. China I Dota tipping? I see a oh, GG, wow. Thieben. Yeah, that's yeah, unusual. There it, there it is. There it is. I mean, 
this game, dude. This game. I gotta I gotta say Darks here. Insane hero. Absolutely insane hero. And secondly, Queen of Pain. Insane bro, player. Not <laughs> by BKB. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing like nobody in Dota 2.